Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the new Mac Pro. So we have been waiting a very long time to finally see this product. This is a high-end desktop workstation computer. This has full desktop class components in it, not mobile components like you get with the iMac or the Mac Mini, and of course the MacBook Pros. So this is the best computer you can get from Apple. Now of course it's just the computer, it doesn't include monitor or even the keyboard and mouse. Now this is also a expensive computer, it's priced accordingly, so this starts off at $3,000 for a quad core and a six core starts off at four thousand dollars and that's the version i have here this is a stock six core xeon powered uh, computer now you can also configure this up to eight and twelve cores which can push the price all the way up to ten grand so this can get quite expensive all right so let's go ahead and pull this open all right so let's just lift the lid and inside we'll find some packaging here looks like we have our mac pro wrapped in plastic so i'm just going to grab the handle to lift it up there it is, quite dirty. Pull that off. All right, so let's take a close look at the packaging. So we have Mac Pro branding with the Mac Pro in profile on the side. We have our little pull tab up here to open this up. And of course, we'll do that in just a second. Apple uh, logo on the side. Same thing on the back. Same thing on the other side. Now on the bottom, you'll find all of the specs. So let me get situated here so you can take a look at that. Now the big label on the bottom of the box reveals the stock configuration we have here. Again, 6-core, 3.5 gigahertz Intel Xeon E5 processor. We have 16 gigs standard of RAM. This is clocked at 866 megahertz. This is ECC memory, so it's high-speed RAM. It tends to be more expensive, but you can upgrade this yourself all the way up to 64 gigs. Now to get to 64 gigs, uh, third party, it costs about $800, which is a little cheaper than what Apple will charge. I think it's $1,200. So we have two AMD Fire Pro D500 graphics processors. So all Mac Pros come with dual graphics, uh, and uh, the 6-core comes standard with D500. The quad-core comes standard with D300. Now the D300 comes standard with 2 gigs of GDDR5 memory. The D500 comes with 3 gigs, and the D700s come with uh, seven or six gigs. Now we have 256 gigs of PCI based storage standard. You can upgrade this up to one terabyte. So that's high speed storage. So you get really good performance there. And we'll demonstrate that in this video. Now I'll talk about the IO ports when we get to the Mac Pro. This does come with 802.11 AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0 built in. Now if you look closer, you also see designed by Apple in California and assembled in the USA. So these are assembled in Texas. Now this isn't the only Mac to be assembled in the USA. The iMac is also assembled here if you get a custom configuration. All right, so let's go ahead and open the box. They give us a little tab here to pull open instead of cutting the seal. All right, so let's go ahead and lift the lid here. And inside we'll actually find this literature packet. Let's go ahead and pull this out. So let's take a quick look at that. So you can see designed by Apple in California. Now the first pamphlet says full speed ahead, of course, alluding to the fact that this is a high-end, high-speed desktop. We have Mac Pro, which is basic regulatory information and warranty information. And we have something really special here, which are these black Apple stickers unique to the Mac Pro. That's kind of neat to see. Now let's take a closer look at this pamphlet, which is kind of nice. So full speed ahead. Welcome to your new Mac Pro. You're about to begin a very happy and productive relationship. So let's get started. Pick it up. The curved edge on the top is meant to be used as a handle. Set it up. This is no floor model. Go ahead and keep it right on your desk, which is what I plan to do. Open it up. Just slide the enclosure release to the right and lift up. And of course, I'll demonstrate all of this. Amp it up so you've got four channels of blazing fast memory and upgrading is just as fast. You also have lots of I.O. on here. So you have six Thunderbolt ports, which allows you to connect up to 36 Thunderbolt devices. Of course, you can daisy chain them together. That's what they're referring to. Now you can power it up so we can't wait to see what you do next. And that's about it. All right, so let's go ahead and get it out of its box and take a close look. All right, so let's get to the Mac Pro, and we have some styrofoam here, holding it nice and securely. As you can see, everything is well engineered, even the packaging. Inside, you can see down there, styrofoam also holding its base. So I'm just gonna grab the handle, like they say, and lift up, and it's about 12 pounds, so it does feel quite hefty for something that size. All right, so let's set that aside for just a moment. And inside, we'll find our cable. So let's go and pull this out of here. You can see our power cable, and of course the power supply is internal. All right, so let's unpack our cable here again. Black to match the Mac Pro. So black is the theme going on here. So let's go and peel this apart. This is pretty much a standard Apple cable. You can see it's got that same design as something like on an iMac. 
Now you have the uh, point at which it connects to the Mac Pro, which is curved, which gives us a nice flush design. We're going to take a look at that in a minute. Now we also have a matching black Thunderbolt cable, which was introduced with the new Mac Pro as well. So I pick one of those up so I can take a look at it. All right, so there's our Mac Pro still wrapped in its plastic wrapper. So we have a little zipper here to pull down to release it. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and take a close look at the design of the Mac Pro, which is a story in itself. So it's quite unusual for a desktop computer, certainly a stark departure from the outgoing cheese grater style uh, Mac Pro, which was more of a classic desktop tower. So this is cylindrical because it's based on a uh, thermal core. It's basically got a huge heat sink in the center that connects to all of your components, including your graphics processor and CPUs, and ventilates toward the top. So there's a single fan at the top, very large fan, custom designed by Apple and it ventilates from the bottom and blows out the top. So this keeps it very quiet so we have a much more quiet desktop than the outgoing Mac Pro uh, and of course much more compact. Now this is about 9.9 .9 inches tall, 6.6 .6 inches wide, has an aluminum external enclosure which is milled. This is actually extruded aluminum that has been milled and polished this very shiny finish. It's not quite black, kind of has a uh, metal or gunmetal finish to it. Uh, it doesn't look like any other Apple device. It doesn't look like space gray or something like that. It's kind of unique to the Mac Pro. Now we also have our switch here for opening up the shell. So you can see we have a nice metal switch here. It's not plastic, so they've done a very nice job with every single detail on this. Now in terms of I.O., we have audio input and output as well as four USB 3.0 ports. We have six Thunderbolt 2.0 ports which have speeds of up to 20 gigs per second and we have two gigabit Ethernet ports. Now we also have an HDMI 1.4 port and that's good for 4K displays at 29 Hertz which is not great, you definitely want higher uh, but hopefully this is upgraded to 2.0 through software, we're not sure at this point. Of course we have our power button and we have our power connector. Now if you flip the Mac Pro upside down you can see the ventilation on the bottom, this is the intake vent. On the bottom you also find this rubber foot which is just grippy enough to hold onto a desktop, but not too grippy to prevent you from turning it around to access the I.O. ports on the back. You can see we have our Mac Pro branding up here, designed by Apple in California, assembled in the USA. Now along the top we have our exhaust vent, which also acts as our handle. So let's go ahead and remove this shell so we can take a look at the internals. All right, so to open this up, just unlock it, lift up. All right, so let's go and take a close look at the design of the Mac Pro. So up here you can see the locking mechanism. So you can see how that interfaces with the casing of the uh, Mac Pro. Up top you'll see your ventilation. Now unfortunately you can't power this without the case on. So you can't run it without the case on. But if you look inside you can actually see the fan sort of moving in there when you move it around. So you can see that this is all metal. This is part of that uh, milled metal design. Now the top piece here is plastic. So that's a plastic component. Now, of course, you see all of our I.O. ports, which are flanked by these rubber fittings. This is part of the case design, uh, which basically, as you can see in here, has these little rails, which uh, interface with that rubber fitting here that prevents vibration and allows this to sort of guide itself onto the chassis without scratching it. Along the side, you'll find your RAM slots. So you can see we have RAM slots on either side of the I.O., very symmetrical. So you have four ports here and they're all labeled one two three four so on the right side we have three and four in order to eject them all I have to do is press this button they pop out and as you can see you can pull them out pretty easily like so now the great thing about the components supplied by Apple is that the back side is black so when you look at it side on you can see that it matches the nice clean design of the Mac Pro and in order to reinstall them just slide them back in Snap it into place, push in, and you're good. Now if we spin this around, we can find our dual GPUs. So you can see these are the back sides of the boards, and the GPUs are actually on the inside of these connected to the heat sink. Uh, on one side, you'll actually find your storage. So this is our PCIe storage. Uh, right now it's only 256, uh, but you can upgrade this. Basically it's an enclosure here which you can take off. There's a standard Torx screw there, so you can plug in your own storage, but there are no expandable options here. So there are no open slots that allow you to add additional storage. They pretty much expect you to add it externally via Thunderbolt. 
Now the Mac Pro is actually very easily disassembled. We have these Torx screws. These are basically standard Torx screws. And you can see they even color match them to the metal of the Mac Pro. So every detail has been considered here, even down to the colors of the Torx screws. Now if you look at the bottom, we have this rubber gasket, which also seals up the Mac Pro when the casing is in place. Now I just want to show you the internal of the external casing. As you can see, it's nicely polished. One piece of metal feels pretty hefty. Uh, if you look here, you can actually see the locking mechanism. Uh, pretty basic here, yeah? just locks in and out. Now I'm not sure if there's a magnet in here which indicates to the Mac Pro whether this is locked or not, but it prevents you from uh, turning on the Mac Pro if this is not on. Now if you look here, around the edge, there is a gasket which seals the top of the Mac Pro. Basically provides some vibration protection as well from the uh, computer itself, so it doesn't rattle or anything like that. Now as you can see, the plug itself is actually curved to the exterior of the Mac Pro, so when you plug it in, it's nice and flush. Now the Mac Pro has another trick here, so it has a built-in accelerometer that lights up the I.O. ports when you move it. So say you want to access your I.O. ports, all you have to do is move it, lights it up for you, and powers down after a few seconds. Now incidentally, the power button remains lit when it's powered on. Alright, so I've connected my Thunderbolt display, but of course you could connect a 4K display as well. I also have my wireless Apple keyboard and my Magic Mouse, so let me go ahead and power this on. Now in terms of noise, it's really quiet and barely audible. You do hear a slight hum, so you can hear the fan working, but it's really silent. You can also feel a little bit of air moving. In fact, if I put a paper towel over it, you can kind of see the air movement here. So not a lot of force there, but it is there. Now just to give you some idea of the internal speaker performance, I have one of my YouTube videos playing, so I'm going to unmute it so you can take a listen. Our startup guide just shows us some of the ports and That volume is at maximum. That house, the micro SD card slot, as well as your SIM tray. Now I'm going to kick it, it to the display audio. SIM, an Nano SIM. We're going to explore, of course, all of that when we look at the device. Uh, important information. Nothing interesting there, and in different languages, U.S. safety guidelines. So it'll get you by, but you definitely want to add your own speakers. That's about it. Now take a look at our synthetic benchmarks. You can see on the left we have Geekbench 3, Black Magic Disc Speed Test, and Nova Bench. So Geekbench 3, we score about 3,500 on single core, about 19,000 on multi core. Now if you compare this to something like the late 2013 iMac, which I also own, that one scored almost 4,000 on the single core score and uh, the multi-core score was a qu quite a bit less than the Mac Pro at 14,774, which makes sense because we're dealing with more cores on the Mac Pro, six versus four. Now, the big gain here is on disk speed. So this disk speed test shows that performance is around 800 megs uh, uh, write speed and about 900 on the read speed. So that's definitely a big improvement over the iMac, which scores about half that performance. Now the Mac Pro on NovaBench scored about 1864, while the iMac scored 1408. Now for my next benchmark, I'm just going to export a quick 33 second AVC HD video just to show you the relative performance between this and the top end iMac. So I'm going to export this using compressor. So I'm going to click start. So the Mac Pro took about 45 seconds to export this project, while the iMac took about 52 seconds. So if you combine this over a larger project, right now this was only 33 seconds, you can imagine just how much faster the Mac Pro is when exporting. Now the Mac Pro can support up to three 4K displays or six Thunderbolt displays, and I've connected a 4K display via HDMI. And unfortunately, HDMI 1.4 is limited to 30 hertz. So any 4K display connected to HDMI on the Mac Pro is stuck at 30 hertz. Now most displays today operate about 60 hertz, so it gives you a much higher frame rate. So something like the Thunderbolt display operates about 60 hertz. So this gives you a lower frame rate, uh, but gives you a lot of screen resolution and a lot of real estate to deal with. But unfortunately, a lower frame rate means you do see some noticeable uh, blur, some noticeable frame dropping, so this makes it unsuitable for things like video editing or gaming. So that's something to consider when choosing the Mac Pro and a 4K display. You're going to want to get something that can support 60 hertz over a compatible port. Now I want to give a big shout out to John at TLD today. I think you guys know who he is. He's personally one of my favorite YouTubers and he's just an outstanding guy to know. And I have to thank him because he hooked me up with this Mac Pro. I had pre-ordered one, but it wasn't arriving until March 5th because I have a custom configuration and I was a little tardy to get that order in. So unfortunately it would have been a long time before I got my hands on the Mac Pro. So if it wasn't for John who found the source in California, gave me a call, hooked me up and I was able to purchase one early and get it to you uh, before uh, March. So thanks, John. And if you want to check out a great 
RAM upgrade video. He did one. Uh, so I'm going to link that in the description below. So if you want to upgrade your RAM in this computer and do it more cheaply than Apple supplies it, uh, take a look at his video. He did a really nice job. Now, as the name suggests, the Mac Pro really is geared toward professionals who could take advantage of the internal specs. So this is really geared toward video editors or 3D animators or people can take advantage of the accelerated hardware and software available for the Mac Pro. So that's going to do for me in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again in the next one.